So you're vegan or plant-based and you're trying to figure out if you should be taking a creatine supplement. What's up fam, it's Naj with Built by Plants. Let's have a conversation about supplementing with creatine. Should you do it? What's the benefits? What's the downsides? We should talk about it. So before we go into the benefits and the details, understand that creatine itself, this is something that we naturally produce within our body. It's a compound that's primarily utilized for energy production. I'll pull out the whiteboard and we'll break all that down how that actually works. But I personally been using creatine for about the past five years and I did notice the difference once I actually started supplementing with it. But keep in mind, this is not a fast reacting tool like pre-workout, right? If you take a pre-workout, what that does is gives you this energy burst so when you take it, you feel it. This is more of a long-term play. It takes about seven to 28 days in order for the creatine to actually get into the blood and go through the process, being able to be utilized for energy. Now, the reason why we supplement with it is because our body doesn't produce enough for the type of effects that we want. Some people get their creatine in through trying to eat a bunch of you know, animal products, meats and such, because animals produce creatine as well. But even individuals who do that, they still end up supplementing with it because you have to eat so much. So what does any of that have to do with anything? How is that related to you and working out and training? Well, when you supplement with creatine, it gives you that ability to push a little bit harder, go a little bit heavier, maybe improve your endurance a little bit more by 5% or so. So as opposed to getting just five reps, maybe you're getting seven reps. Or as opposed to using 130 pounds, maybe it allows you to use 135 or 140, right? It gives you that slight advantage and to be able to get a little bit more squeeze out of that container before it's gone. So it's allowing you to get everything that you possibly can out of your muscles. Anyone that actually lifts weights understands that the accumulation that you can add to what you're already doing is gonna make a huge difference over the course of time. Some of the other benefits that has been outlined for creatine, it has been shown to improve cognitive function such as working memory and intelligence and things like that. You can experiment with that and do your own research based off of that. But you know, when you look at some of the studies online, they do show certain groups of individuals that have improved their brain function and such do so, so. One of the least talked about benefits, I don't really hear too much of anybody speaking on, is the mental edge that you receive when you're on creatine, if you want to call it on creatine, right? Just the fact of you adding it into your diet makes you feel like you're taking something that makes you a little bit more superior or have a little bit more of an advantage, right? It's a placebo. So maybe you just mentally feel like you're able to push yourself a little bit more than what you would have normally done. So maybe a lot of it can be contributed to that as well. But that's just one of the things that I realized once I actually did start taking it, that I felt like I was able to actually do more because now I'm on creatine versus when I wasn't. Just some other things to think about. So before we get into the questions of what time should you take creatine? When should you do it? How should you take it? what forms, let's understand what happens inside of our body when we actually take it, all right? What is the process? And we're gonna break that down. Now, this is how we create energy within our body. Let's understand this, ATP, let me get my pointer. ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Super simple, we're gonna keep this basic, all right? Lamest terms, adenosine triphosphate. So A with three Ps. Three phosphates, tri, three Ps. So what happens is in order for ATP to create energy, it has to break off that last P, which is why it has a little squiggly line right there. It breaks it off. This little P right there is not loyal, all right? It's for the streets. So ATP converts into ADP, adenosine diphosphate. Di meaning two, that's what the D stands for, two. So it drops this P, and then it only has two Ps right down here. It goes from triphosphate to diphosphate. Three Ps to two Ps. That's how the energy is released to perform what we need when it comes to weightlifting, when it comes to training. Now, when this adenosine diphosphate, it's basically useless. It needs that extra P in order for it to create energy again, which is where creatine comes in. Creatine itself has a phosphate as well, CP. So you can see the circle P right there. What do you think happens? Creatine says, hey bro, look like you're missing a P. And I know you can't create energy without this extra P, so I'm gonna lend it to you and let you do your thing. So creatine gives its P to adenosine diphosphate so it can become adenosine triphosphate. So it's right there, APP. It grabs the P from creatine and it becomes 
a PPP again, all right? So that creates that energy. So this is the ATP cycle. So it bonds back with a PPP and it becomes ATP again. And this is the cycle of how it works. In order for ATP to create energy again, this little P right there, it goes back to the streets, breaks off, and it becomes ADP. So ADP by itself can't do anything without that extra P. So it borrows that P from creatine to become ATP again. It bonds again, and that's the cycle. Now, here's the thing. There are other phosphates, there are other ways, there are other pathways other than creatine in order to create the cycle. But creatine is the fastest re releasing one, it's the fastest reacting one, right? Which is why we supplement with it. This episode is sponsored by Built by Plant Supplements, the elite plant-based nutrition supplement company provides you with support for all of your goals, whether that's building muscle, losing fats, improving your performance in the gym, and getting some great night rest, all right? So if you're tired of people asking you constantly, where do you get your protein? Tell them bbpsubs.com. Come over and grab you some vegan protein powder, chocolate frosty flavor, 110 calories per serving with 22 grams of protein. And if you don't like chocolate, we got a vanilla ice cream as well. Get your pre-workout powder so you can be a beast in the gym and the creatine to support that muscle growth, all right? And if you really need some great night rest, go ahead and grab you some nightcaps. Good melatonin, gonna help you be knocked out. Not waking up in the middle of the night, none of that bad stuff, all right? So bbpsubs.com, use the checkout code BBP10 and save 10% off your whole order. On top of that, free shipping over any order over $75. bbpsubs.com, let's get back to the episode. So why is this ATP relevant? What did any of that I just talked about have to do with you and you wanting to supplement with creatine? Let's just say for our purpose, we're weight training. We're trying to build more muscle. It allows you to have that ability to perform a little bit more maximally, push a little bit harder than you would have prior to taking creatine. So over the course of time, maybe you're able to squeeze out one to two more reps, or if you're doing your main compound movements, it gives you a five to 10% increase in strength. Also gives you that ability to keep going, improves that endurance of those short bursts of energy movements when you're doing those compound movements, bench press or those deadlifts or squats, bicep curls, whatever it may be. It allows you to get a little bit more out of that set that you probably wouldn't have been able to do so prior to supplementing with creatine. It's not anything drastic. You're not gonna gain 50 pounds of muscle or add 100 pounds to your bench press. Nothing like that, it ain't that crazy. But over the course of time, when you look at the whole accumulation, all that adds up. More volume, more progressive overload, more strength, more size, and it's just an extra benefit that it doesn't hurt for you to take. You don't necessarily have to do any creatine loading. You'll probably see that thrown around, which is where, let's just say you haven't been taking creatine, so you wanna load up on all the creatine that you can, maybe 20 to 30 grams in a day, per day, for the first week or two weeks or something like that to make up for the time period that you didn't. It's not that serious. Just start with five grams per day. Just do that over the course of time. Within seven to 28 days, max, you know, six to eight weeks, you'll be able to see the benefits and be able to feel the benefits, that advantage that it gives you to be able to perform a little bit better. So five grams is perfect. Now, what are some of those side effects of creatine? So one of the things that probably will pop up that you may see is do you actually gain weight with creatine? Possibly one to two pounds of weight though, not fat, which is water weight inside of the actual muscle, which decreases over time, which isn't a bad thing, right? If it gives you that ability to perform better than what you would have in the gym, had you not been taking the creatine, when you have the extra two pounds and that just drops off after a while anyway. So it's not something that you have to really be concerned with. So when you have more muscle tissue, one or two pounds of water weight, it may make you look even better just due to the fact of you being at a higher muscle mass. It's not that big of a deal. Plus you can do manipulations that can cause you to lose water weight. So what's the best time to actually have your creatine? Does the time even matter? Should you have in the morning or the evening? It's not a fast reacting thing. It doesn't give you an advantage as soon as you take it. Whenever you can fit into your schedule, that should be the routine time that you have it. So maybe in the morning time, when you wake up and you go into the kitchen, you have your water and then you have your coffee, have a little cup of water with the five grams of creatine, mix it in, drink it. Or if you have yourself a daily smoothie or a protein shake, just take the five grams, put it as another ingredient to your protein shake, mix it in and you're good to go, right? Whatever you can consistently do, that's what's best because creatine works best when you consistently have it, right? So just like you would wake up every day and brush your teeth, I hope, 
uh, wash your face and all those things, just put it into your routine, something that you can do consistently and you're good to go. So what's actually the best creatine to have? What kind should you get? Honestly, it really doesn't matter. It's not gonna make a huge difference. There's been a lot of studies that show that you used to get the same benefits. Um, now, creatine monohydrates, probably the cheapest and it's what you can get and buy in bulk and be set for a while. So there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and grab your creatine and you're good to go. So in short, should you be taking creatine? Yes, it's like, why not? It has so many extra benefits. It gives you so much more when you're actually in a gym to be able to perform and endure. Basically a no-brainer. Why not have an extra benefit to your training and your performance when there's no real downsides? And honestly, everyone can take it for the most part that are adults, right? They have been, some studies have shown that kids maybe can or shouldn't as far as teens when it comes to sports and things like that, but 20 and up, Go ahead, especially even older adults, they're probably the ones that should be taking it more because it gives you an advantage to be able to have that energy source when needed and to be able to perform a little bit better, all right? Hope that was helpful. Hope that covered a couple of questions that you may have had about creatine. If you're vegan, should you have it? Yes, creatine itself is vegan. It's not a animal source. If you need some of the studies to make a better beneficial decision for yourself, I'm gonna attach a study that I recommend down below or just type in PubMed online and you pull up a whole bunch of different ones that are done on creatine or just do your own research whatever you want to do subscribe to the channel like this video share it with somebody else that wants to know should they be taking creatine for performance and such and i'll catch y'all next time